feel very honored to be part of this elite forum. So I represent the healthcare informatics uh, side of the digital healthcare and I was lucky enough to be uh, part of different regions through my journey of 24 years working across uh, US, uh, Europe, Middle East, Africa, as well as uh, you know, the developing countries in Asia. And I myself have been a consumer of Indian healthcare system. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about uh, you know, all, I would say distilling those experiences on what are some of the opportunities that we have uh, learning and kind of reimagining the healthcare system as we go forward, the value-based as well as you know, driving healthcare equity. So let me first start with you know, my experience uh, as I have actually uh, interacted with the healthcare system. So my wife actually has a chronic migraine problem. And we often land up uh, into hospital because of uh, you know, the migraine attacks that she gets into. Uh, and this happens to be one of the fifth uh, in, through the same hospital. And this is how the journey goes. Right? The first visit is from a general uh, you know, uh, medicine visit, so after the ED visit, uh, so, so general physician actually comes in, looks at the problem and gives a prescription. The second visit, because it is actually a neurological challenge, they said let's consult a neurologist. So I have a prescription number two. And then a gastroenterologist, because it is associated, also visits, gives a prescription number three. Within a span of a couple of hours, I actually landed up with three prescriptions and then the ED person comes back and gives an MSET and a painkiller, right? And obviously, all of this essentially landed into a five hours of experience and obviously number of transactions that have happened and payment against those transactions, right? So the experience itself talks about some of the fault lines while the intention of each of these experts have been extremely good and each one of them have been extremely well at, at doing the job, right? And starting to think about it, what has been missing? If you really look at it, in, in this whole uh, game, what was missing? First and the foremost is availability of information at the right time, and was it actually personalized? Now, no pun intended, but if I go for my car service, they essentially know what happened last time. But in healthcare system, it didn't really show up in a manner where it could be personalized. It's something extremely simple for somebody who suffers with chronic migraine. So that's how we actually look at you know, consumption. We had three visits. Those five hours could have been lesser if we actually had a mechanism for the physicians to interact with each other. So all of these are use cases as we look at from a consumer standpoint what a digital uh, transformation can actually lead to. Right? Having said that, let's switch gears a little bit. So what does it mean when you think about a country of India scale? So from a country of India scale, if you really look at it, while we do not really see that we have a very high geriatric population, but still the numbers that we look at is extremely high. We still have a fairly large number of people who will turn and will turn 60, 65, and the population demographic actually talks a little bit about that. The second is the changing disease profile. We actually, the Honorable Minister spoke about it. We are gaining more and more non-communicable diseases, and these need to be managed, right? And that management is an extremely important part actually to be looked at because if you don't manage them, it leads into a very different kind of a healthcare organization that we will actually end up serving, which needs you know, physical spaces and uh, uh, rather than the, the virtual spaces that we work in today. So as, an, as, a, as a country, you know, the distribution also of this population is different, our education levels are different, and then finally, you know, even the way they get treated and they want to kind of you know, consume these services is extremely different. How do you deal with this equity? How do you actually bring that together? And how do you build for future? So that's the lens with which there are a lot of learnings that we can actually think about what we can bring to our, our, our nation. Having said that, now if you really look at from an from a infrastructure standpoint, and I think government has done a brilliant job with regard to putting the core infrastructural elements in place. So first and the foremost, from a digital standpoint is the ability to just communicate. So the first part is the digital uh, India essentially connects to the rural areas very, very effectively. So that allows now us to ride those services, whether those are cell phone based, whether those are smart centers, to actually uh, to, to, to be developed. The second is, how do we take advantage of the smartphone coverage? Smartphone coverage today in the rural healthcare, uh, if you really, sorry, in the rural regions is 6% versus urban, which is 25 
and that 2.5 actually represent replacements as well versus you know the new cell phone coverage that we actually see so people are actually consuming and covid just accelerated that significantly how do we actually take advantage of that and third is the digital health mission which is ayushman bharat mission and that is an extremely powerful platform for us to innovate on on that mission because it provides that backbone for us and then finally you have somebody to pay for it right while we build all of this we have somebody to pay for it obviously there is a lot of innovation that is expected dr anil spoke about it how to kind of look at you know making it more uh, you know oriented towards uh, value uh, rather than transactions but somebody can pay for it is a huge lever for us and then if we really look at our disease profile uh, of the uh, of india right and the kind of evidence that exists on how to deal with that is is we need to continuously produce so the intent which is again icmr powered how do we actually feed the relevant data to build that evidence and then eventually build the ai machine learning algorithms augmentation and all those sort of areas so if we really look at this flywheel this flywheel can really crank faster for us to scale to build the equity and then finally essentially drive the objectives of value based care and if i really look at this it covers three aspects it gives us the access second it gives us the equity so that we can start you know provisioning these services to us and then finally the affordability of care the core elements which we need uh, you know for us to scale uh, or or i would say to achieve the billion scale that we need as far as the healthcare coverage is concerned so this i would say the right infrastructural elements now how do you leverage them in the best possible manner so so with these right and this is the opportunity for all of us you know whether we are startups whether we are actually innovating uh, you know with 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 uh, newer uh, devices or we are actually putting informatics uh, in place let me talk a little bit about you know some of these learnings uh, and some of the opportunities that we may have right first and the foremost when we look at digital healthcare and i think all of us would agree it is actually not about technology technology becomes an enabler for us it becomes a tool it's a sharp tool for us and we need to deploy it in the right right manner so the first and the foremost is when we look at value based care we actually need to shift care left that means move into a more of preventive and management side of things and self management we will never be able to produce doctors at the rate that we actually need for our rural health care honorable minister spoke about that various challenges right but at the same time can we promote self management can we deploy technology to do that that's our first opportunity so if we really look at diagnostics now we can't uh, you know have a healthcare forum without talking about what covid did to us whole ivds how can we actually make it democratized and that gives us a huge opportunity to think about how diagnostics can actually move into the hands of people you know whatever rough it is but at least sending us some signals so it gives us the opportunity to de develop that connected the second part of this is let's reimagine healthcare and when we say reimagine healthcare we have a primary secondary tertiary can we not think about digital primary secondary tertiary and what that means is you know when we think about digital in this particular case we also have a huge infrastructure of asha anm workers which have the last mile connectivity can we enable them and that allows us to now build a, a, a i would say a anytime anywhere care kind of a model and we 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 can innovate around that you know huge opportunity for us to bring care where people are right not necessarily physical commute but telecommute right? so let's reimagine the tiering of healthcare itself and that will also right size these opportunities the third part is don't forget the physicians digital is not easy for physicians as they actually you know look at this it's a huge information overload we all talk about physician burnout let's do this right when we have the opportunity to do that so let's think about augmenting them with decision support let's think about how do we build tools so that it makes their jobs easy so that they can build the right decisions and then finally service the the uh, the the patients in the best possible manner and and same goes for you know the nursing staff the brilliant job really really uh, you know put in effort physical mental uh, effort that they put in how can we augment them so i think let's think augmentation of the healthcare expertise that we that we have at our leverage and how do we kind of expand that and that's that's the third third part of it and this also allows us to actually create a huge high fidelity data data that we need 
Now, if you really look at you know, the US, I mean, that's the example that we take. The data was an afterthought for them. CMS started sharing data way later when they started digitizing. Right? Today, if you really look at our Ayushman Bharat, we must be capturing millions of data points on a daily basis about our population, the variety of population that we deal with, how high potency that data can be for all of us in building something which is personalized to, to India, to our demographics, and to, uh, to, to our populations and our disease profiles. So how do we build that data backbone? And I believe here we have a great opportunity for academic medical centers. And we have a huge network of academic medical centers. We have consent base. I mean, National uh, Digital Health Mission allows us to actually do the consent. But how do you make custodians? How do you actually control? Can we think about data donation in this case? Can the citizens be proactive in donating the data so that you know, we can innovate on the top of it? And data is the new oil eventually as we start tapping our healthcare knowledge into algorithms. So how do we build that infrastructure? How do we build that information network with the academic medical centers facilitating that? So these are the opportunities that I believe we have to get few things right, learning from what we have seen across the world. And uh, you know, given the infrastructure that is given to us at our hands, a huge opportunity for India. And I really look forward to collaborating on this. Thank you so much.